New Mexico's first debate in this year's race for governor, featuring Democratic Governor Grishel Lujan Mishum and Republican challenger Ron Marquette. Now, our moderators. And good evening, New Mexico. We have more than a month until Election Day. The Republican and Democratic candidates for governor, incumbent Democrat Grishel Lujan Mishum and Republican challenger Ron Marquette. They are both joining us here at our KOB4 studios tonight. And here are the rules our candidates have agreed upon. We flipped a coin to determine the order of opening and closing statements. Ron Marquette, you will be. <laughs> New Mexico is at a crossroads. This governor has been letting out violent criminals for the past two years and as you look at our prison population it's actually 20 percent lower if you think the system is broken she is the head of the system but I would ask you has that helped you in your family the answer is no nope. we can get better we can make our streets safer we can educate our kids better we can educate our kids safer we can make our streets better and I look forward to laying out that plan tonight Governor Grishel Lujan Mishum, your opening remarks. We've come actually a long way in four years, but as New Mexicans, we've been through a lot. But I remain steadfast in my optimism about what comes next. We have strengthened and diversified our economy, and we've made it easier for more people to access the health care that they need and to make their own highly personal health care decisions. I will protect their access to reproductive health care and their rights to make those decisions. Thank you. Crime. What will be your top specific crime-related legislative priority to help remedy crime. Governor, you'll begin. Albuquerque, as you just stated, into public safety. We actually created policies, including one that mirrors the Mark Ronchetti's plan to cut government. We lost more than 400 officers. We've increased the penalties for repeat offenders and violent offenders, and we're making sure that we have additional FBI and U.S. Marshal presence. Next session, we get bail reform over the finish line. Yeah, a long list there that is not doing any good and in fact is making it worse. What the governor doesn't tell you is over the past two years nothing is going to go through until we protect the people of this state. That's time, We're the Ryan second Kennedy. most violent state in the country for a reason. Governor, you have up to a minute for a rebuttal if you'd yeah, like. Bold words from someone who's never even been to a legislative session, who's never had to deal with any of these issues directly, for someone who's failing to uh, uh, admit that we have 400 fewer officers from his mentor, former Governor Susana Martinez. He wants you to focus on the things that he can't do or build, that we're getting the public safety resources that we need, and quite frankly, working together. Let's have a conversation about gun violence and guns on our streets, Mark. Governor, I'm happy to have any discussion you would like, and it's funny that you say, I haven't been to a legislative session. Are you kidding me? We live it. We live the crime every day. You don't have to go to the roundhouse so we can't recruit them. You've got to be kidding. We can absolutely do better than that. Thank you both. Accused of crime. Frank Marchetti, you get to start here. What is that? Well, effectively, that's a tool that's used, and it's an equation they use, and they put some information into it. They put an offender into also stiffen the penalties under our three strikes law and expand those penalties as well so that those that commit violent crime end up paying for it in due time behind bars here. And let's not forget that this is a state that eradicated all access to drug addiction and mental health services. It, working for the federal system, it creates consistency. You don't have to use any discretionary aspect. And I'm going to keep fighting until we get that over the finish line. Governor, we're offended. It's absolutely unbelievable all across this city that watch us go through year after year of record homicides. The families across this city who have had enough of the property crime, it's so bad, it's enough. That is not true. What 85% of the budget is? Public safety, health care, education. How many fewer police officers? How many reductions in pay? How many fallen officers aren't going to have the best benefits in America because you've decided that you believe that what you call government folks who work tirelessly every day, including, by the way, public uh, police officers are public servants. Governor, thank you. We want to move now on to abortion. Please. And Governor, you'll go first. During his his primary, when he was debating, regulating abortion at all stages, he was literally dancing on the grave of Roe v. Wade. Let me be clear, as long as I'm governor, a woman's constitutional right to privacy, to make her own highly, deeply personal decisions about her health care and her family, say anything to get elected, but work towards a national ban 
on abortion. Now, my, my opinion on this and, and my beliefs on this have never changed. I am pro-life. I am shocked and appalled. The governor wants to make it for you. That's laid out by the legislature, and they should have a chance to write it up, and then everybody in the state of New Mexico should be able to vote on it and come up with something that fits our shared values. About a deeply personal decision that I may or may not have to make are extreme medical emergencies. I, in my first pregnancy, had an extreme medical emergency, and I was lucky. He can decide. No, that one we can't actually let you vote on. Reading out of for a long time. When she shut down schools, did you have a voice in that? No. The Mexicans are paying too much. I am shocked and appalled. Using today's dollars, New Mexico's just now spending in the key categories, public safety, education, and health care. We need to make sure that we have the right balance, and the governor and I disagree on this. She inherited a $2 billion surplus, so as, as much as she's seen extra money over the past few years, we need to help them. That's why we're proposing the largest tax cut for small business inflation, and you need help to get to the end of the month. We have the money to do both. You have another minute on this. These record revenues are because our economic policies work, and how do they work? We're investing directly into small businesses. And you know what they want? A ready workforce. And how are they going to get that? Because they now have free tuition college for workers. You actually go to those communities and you talk to small business owners are not making a difference for people on the ground. Education. Where can we make the most gains the fastest? And what is your plan to do so? And Mr. Ronchetti, you begin here. Yeah, Matt, let's start with reading. I think that's where we've got to go first. Every piece of research that you do, and that we know about what education says. If kids can read to proficiency by third grade, so we're going to invest in that all across the state of New Mexico. Well, I appreciate the support for our education policies and more are coming. Smaller class sizes and more time in the classroom, which is something else that we're funding. I think right now when you look at where funding is, especially where funding is for early childhood, we have enough funds for it right now. So to me, it would make more sense to wait and see what happens with this. I personally would not support it. Years can tick off very quickly. Most vulnerable families. We're the only state in America right now where child poverty is going in the right direction. All the other states, and I think it's tied to the pandemic, are going the opposite. It is now time for closing statement. Thanks very much, Matt and Governor. Thank you very much. One Vision is a vision that has put us in a very, very difficult spot in a bunch of different areas, whether it be sky-high crime, our kids not being educated like they should be, or your pocketbook issues where you have more month than money. But we have to support change to do it. And I would appreciate your vote. You can go look on our website. Thank you. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham, your closing remarks. Thousands of lives, whether that's a pandemic, devastating wildfires, or floods. Universal pre-K, expanded daycare, highest paid educators in the Southwest and our region. I will continue to fight to protect women and their families. Not now, not ever. I hope I've earned your vote again tonight. And we hope you will join us for our debates next month.